everyone, my name is Alexa, and welcome to the second lesson of my web design workshop. If you were here last week, we began this workshop focusing on HTML, which is one of the languages that we use in web design, and it's used to add elements to our page. For example, we can add paragraphs, headings, images with HTML. And we did that all, yes, I mean, we did that all last week. If you missed that video, no worries. Um, but I do advise you to go back and watch it because a lot of what we're going to be doing today will be based off the video. So today, we're going to get started with CSS. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. What is CSS? It's a language that is used to style HTML elements. Now by styling, I mean adding color, changing font, changing the size, the positioning of all these elements that we have on our website. We're gonna link our style sheet using an external style sheet. And CSS is made up of selectors and properties. Just like HTML is made up of elements and attributes, CSS is made of selectors and properties. And here I have this segment down to the left that is actually valid CSS code. So this will work. The selector in this case is the H1, which is highlighted orange. And the property is the color here, which is the red. And this code will turn all the H1s blue. And we'll get into that once we open Glitch. So we're going to go over a few selectors today. The type selectors, the universal selector, class selectors, and ID selectors. And we're also going to look at which selectors are the most powerful, which are the most specific. And this is actually a list of the most specific from least to greatest. So one being type selectors and three being ID selectors, which are the most specific. All right, so let's go to Glitch. I'm gonna give you a few minutes to open up Glitch. You can go to glitch.com, sign in, or you may be already signed in, and just select the project that you are working on, which will be your website. And then you should see a page like this, and you can go to this index.html. Make sure it's highlighted purple on the left. All right, so this is the website that I created last video, and it does have a lot of elements on it, but it's not exactly appealing to the eye. There needs to definitely be more color in there. So the first thing we need to do is locate our styles.css file. So right on the left, we have it here. And you can see that I added in these couple comments that are just going to describe what we're going to do in these sections. But you do not have to do this. I'm just doing it so it looks organized and it's easier for you to see. But right now, our styles sheet and our index.html are not linked. Both of them don't know that the other exists. And so that means if we make a change in the style sheet and we say we want all of our headings to be the color blue, it's not going to reflect that in the HTML because they're not linked. Now to link them, we want to locate this head tag and inside Remember how I told you to comment this out last video? Well, we're going to highlight this, the line that says link rel equals style sheet, and we're going to press command slash if you're on Mac or control slash if you're on Windows, and then it will uncomment. It won't be gray anymore. So what this does, it's a link tag, and um, there's an attribute here that says rel equals style sheet. And then another attribute that says href is equal to styles.css. And that is actually the name 
of our file here. So whatever this file name is, you put that in the href. If you're using glitch, it should be slash style.css for all of you. Okay, nothing has changed, but that's because we don't have anything in our style sheet yet. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the universal selector. And this selects all of the elements on the page. So it's gonna select all of this, every single thing. So usually developers use this to basically clear the whiteboard because sometimes our browser gives um, additional styling or already built in styling to our elements. So they usually do margin and they set it to zero and they also set padding to zero. Now we see here that it actually kind of makes our website look worse because there's no margin or padding anymore. Everything is scrunched up, but it's just something to clear the whiteboard, but we're actually going to delete this padding to zero because we want to leave some of the padding. And um, I advise you to open up your code in a new window. I have it opened here and you can see it on full screen. So it's still pretty scrunched up, but we're going to fix that by individually styling, styling the elements. All right, so let's move on to the type selector. Type selectors select all elements that are of that type. For example, if I wanted to select this H1, I can go to index.html and see, yes, this is an H1. And if I go back to my style sheet and type H1, just like how I showed you in the slide, this is actually the demo, and we set the color to blue. Blue is our attribute, and this H1 is our selector, then our H1 turns blue. Now we don't have any other H1s on this page, but if we did have one, so I'm just gonna add one just for show, and I'm just gonna type some random thing in there, we see that it highlights blue or the font becomes blue as well. So this style is going to make every H1 blue. That's why it's a type selector because it selects all elements of that type. Let me just delete that. All right, so at least we know how to color now. Before we move on, I'm actually going to add a few more properties to this. So instead of blue, I'm going to say white. And then I want to change the background color to blue instead. So now it's going to look like that. Also, I'm going to align the text in the center. And if you're wondering where I'm getting these these um sorry, these properties from like color, background color, text align, these are all things that you're going to learn by practicing CSS. No one really memorizes all of the CSS properties. There's like hundreds of them. I, I'm pretty sure there's hundreds of them, but the easy ones you're going to come to memorize as you keep coding. So right now you can just try to follow along. And there's also multiple websites that give you information about these properties and how to use them. All right, so I actually want to change the font. I don't want this default font that they give us. So we can do that by using the font family property. Font family is something that's built into CSS. So there's a couple fonts we can choose from that are already built in. I'm going to choose new courier and family is monospace. So that's going to look like that. Let's say that you wanted a different font. Well, to see which fonts that are built in and that you're able to choose without doing any extra work is um, you can go to this website. I think I literally looked up CSS fonts and um, I clicked on this website, w3schools.com. 
and here it has the list of font families that are available just with basic CSS. So you can do Times New Roman, Georgia, Ariel, Verdana, all of these. I chose Corriere New. And so if you wanted to add Verdana, you could do Verdana and you put the generic family, which if we look is sans serif. So let's do that just for show. And then it changes. I'm going to change this back. Okay, so it's looking a little better. If we see here, we have some sort of header here, but I would like to make this a little taller or give more height to it. We can do this by adding some padding. So once we do this, I'm, I'm just going to say 20 pixels. And now we get this element looking a lot bigger, covering more area. Padding is basically making this H1 bigger. That's what it does. It extends the boundaries of the element. All right, so our H1 is looking pretty good. Let's move on to our subtitle here. So if I go back to my HTML, I can see that this subtitle is an H3. So let's see. I'm going to select it by doing H3. And then I want to change the font family to the same as above. And then I also want to text align center and uh, I want to give it some padding as well. All right, so now it looks like that. However, when I go down here, I see that these also change and that's because both of these list titles are H3s as well. I coded that in before. But let's say I didn't want these to change or have the same styling as this subtitle here. What I can do is only give this styling to this element. And the way we do that is with class selectors. Ooh, I think I deleted my class selector section. I'm just gonna put that here. All right, now we have a class selector section. So what I can do is go to back to my index.html. I can go to this header or this heading that I want to change. So that's this H3 is right here. And I can go in the opening tag and just like we added an attribute to the A tag down here, that's href, we can add an attribute to this H3 and this attribute is called class, and we're gonna set that equal to whatever we wanna name this class. You can name it whatever you want, but I would advise that you name it something that you're gonna remember or that makes sense. So I'm gonna name it subtitle because that's what this H3 is being used for. So if I go back to my styles, I can select this class by, I'm going to go in my class selector section, but you don't have to do that. I'm just going to do dot and then the name of our class, which is subtitle. So the dot signifies that it's a class and the subtitle is just the name of the class. Now, if I copy all of this down here, now only this heading or only this H3 changes. All of these are left to the default. All right, so we've used a class selector, we use type selectors. Um, let's actually use another type selector to style this image. Right now, it's kind of shifted to the left and that doesn't look too great. 
So what I can do is add an image type selector because this is an image tag. And I want to get this image in the center. Now before these elements, well, I got these elements in the center by doing text align and then center. But I can't do that with this image because it's not text, it's an image, it won't work. So right now, our image is kind of glued to the left side of the page. And the way we can unglue it, however you want to phrase that, unglue it from the page is by doing display and then block. This will free it from the left side and make us have the ability to move it around. Next, I'm going to set the margin to auto. This is going to make sure that the margins are equal on all sides. So margins are just the white space right here, the white space um, between the border of the website and the image. And they're going to make sure, auto is going to make sure that these margins are equal. Thus, our image is going to be centered. So if we look here, our image is indeed centered. We can also add a border to our image. And the border actually takes in three things. First, we got to put in the weight of our border. So I'm going to say three pixels. And then we're going to put in the type of border we want. So I'm going to put solid. And then the color of the border. I'm going to say lime. All right. So right now, we have a border. Um, you can also change this solid to dashed and it will be a dashed border. All right, I'm gonna change it back to solid. Okay. So if we look back at our website, it's looking pretty decent so far. Next, I'm gonna style this paragraph. I think, yeah, it's a paragraph. So to do that, since I only have one paragraph, I don't really need to use any classes or anything. So what I can do is put the P element and use a type selector. And I'm gonna have the font family be the same as the ones before. And I'm also going to give this some padding. All right, and another um, cool property we can add is text decoration. And I'm gonna set this to underline. And this will underline um, that piece of text here, or our paragraph. And I'm also going to text align this in the center. if it will reload. All right, so that looks good. All right, before we move on, I'm going to actually style these H3s or these titles of the list. So I'm gonna select the H3 and I'm gonna give them a color of blue when I do that, if I look up and see, why does this one turn blue? Before it was black, but now it turns blue. I mean, it is an H3, but I do have this dot subtitle class. So basically, to fix this and make it the color black again, I can just set this color equal to black in the subtitle. And when I do that, after it reloads, it will turn black again. Also going to give this a font family of new Courier monospace. And that's looking pretty good. Maybe some, no, that's good. <laughs> All 
All right, so now let's talk about some ID selectors and what they are. I'm gonna use a ID selector for each of these LIs because I wanna make each of these separate LIs a different color. Now, if I wanted to select these LIs, I could do just a regular type selector LI and say color blue or something like that. But this is actually gonna select all the LIs and even the LIs on this list, but you can't really tell because the link is purple, but these bullet points are blue. To fix this, I'm gonna use an ID selector. So what I can do is similar to how we made the class, we can go back to our HTML and um, let me find that list, ordered list, yeah, this one. So what we can do is go into our li and then in our opening tag, and just like how we added a class here, instead we're gonna replace class with ID. So we're gonna set ID equal to whatever you wanna name your ID. I'm just gonna name it one because I have nothing better to name it. And I'm gonna name this one two and this one three. All right, now nothing changes because we haven't styled any of these. But the way we select our IDs is with a hashtag or pound, whatever you wanna call it. And I'm just gonna type one, which is our first, was the first ID that we put. And I can put the color and set it to lime and then I can do the same thing for two and set the color to blue and the same thing for three. Set the color to, let's say, indigo. Now, each of our list items has a different color. And these ones, oh, did not mean to click that, but at least these ones are, are, they're not affected by the styling done here. They're just as they were normally. All right, so I've colored them, but now I wanna change all their fonts. Now to do this, I could put the font family into each of these separate IDs, however, that's really not efficient. I don't want to type this font family three times. It's kind of repetitive. So what I can do is actually group these IDs together. And we do that by using a comma. So if I do hashtag one, hashtag two, hashtag three, now they're all grouped together and I put the curly brackets. Now whatever I put in here will be styled to all of these. So I'm gonna say font family, Verdana Sans Serif. Now all of these have that Verdana font and I did that in one line instead of having to type font family Verdana three times in the three separate IDs. And you, you can do this with um, multiple different selectors. So it doesn't have to be IDs. You can do this with H1, you can put an H1 there and it will change. You can group them however you would like. So our website is looking pretty styled. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done. But I just want to show you one last thing with the styling. And that is, I'm going to show you that with the links. So I'm going to go to my type select selector section 
and I'm going to select the a tag which is which are these links here and what I'm going to do is before I write anything in here I'm going to add a colon and put hover now what this does is anytime my mouse is hovering over these links this style will activate so if I change the color to red when I hover over the A we see that the color changes to red when I hover over the links and you could do this with um, literally any element for example if I put H1 then if I hovered over this H1 it's going to turn red so you can play around with that and that will add some bit of dynamicness to your website all right so we learned a lot about CSS today and how to style our website in the ways that we want, how to add color, change our fonts, etc. And my website's not finished being styled, but um, in the next week, hopefully you can finish styling your website. Feel free to make it your own, change the colors, um, change the picture, change anything you want, but use these basics that I taught you to style this website. Styling is really important even though it's um, not too difficult of a language to learn because styling is what the user sees when they view your website. It's really gonna make or break their experience on your website. When we style things, it actually gives us some credibility <laughs> So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, leave a like and feel free to pause, rewatch, whatever you want to do on this video. And I'm going to leave the remaining couple minutes for you to ask me questions in the live chat and I'll be happy to answer them. So thank you again. And stay tuned for next week where we're going to be going over the basics of programming.